Object-oriented programming is the artistic realm where code becomes a canvas for creation. Classes are like artistic concepts, and objects are the vibrant brushstrokes. The object-oriented programming paradigm emerged as a major programming approach in the 1960s and 1970s. It introduced a new way of designing and organizing software by emphasizing the concept of objects, which are instances of classes containing both data and the methods or functions that operate on that data. The first language to incorporate OOP concepts was Simula, developed by Wiljoan Dahl and Christian at the Norwegian Computing Center in the early 1960s. Simula was primarily designed for simulations and introduced the concept of classes and objects. While Simula laid the foundations for OOP, it was the programming language Smalltalk developed by Xerox PARC in the 1970s that popularized the OOP paradigm. Smalltalk's influence on software development was significant. Its ideas and concepts inspired the development of other programming languages, including C++, which was created by Bjarne Straustrup in the early 1980s. C++ combined the OOP features of Simula with the efficiency and low-level programming capabilities of the C language. Another language influenced by Smalltalk was Objective-C, developed by Brad Cox and Tom Love in the early 1980s. Objective-C added OOP features to the C programming language as well, and later became the primary language for macOS and iOS application development. Java, created by James Glossling at Sun Microsystems in the mid-1990s, also embraced the OOP paradigm. Java's design drew inspiration from C++, but incorporated a simplified and more secured approach to memory management. Java's platform independence and its write-once-run-everywhere capability contributed to its widespread adoption in enterprise software development and the growth of the internet. The emergence of Java as a simpler and more accessible programming language during its inception revolutionized the software industry. Today, object-oriented programming has become an integral part of nearly every modern high-level language, shaping the way software is developed and empowering developers to create more sophisticated and scalable solutions. I will likely be using a combination of languages in this video to demonstrate the concepts of OOP, but mostly just C++, Java, and Dart because I think they use the OOP paradigm the most. To represent and help visualize the data of different objects, I will be using JavaScript object notation. This is not how objects are represented in most languages, but it will serve as a way to show what exactly the state of an object is at any given point in time. The first concept that we're going to be discussing are classes. Classes serve as the fundamental building blocks of object-oriented programming by allowing the creation of user-defined data types. Unlike predefined data types like integers or strings, classes enable developers to define their own data types within a code base. In essence, a class can be seen as a blueprint or template for creating multiple instances of the same object. Within a class, attributes can be defined. By using this class, similar objects can be instantiated, and these objects will share the attributes specified in the class. For instance, consider an animal class that generates objects representing dogs and cats. Although the dog and cat objects are distinct, they possess shared attributes because they originate from the same class. So what exactly is the benefit of any of this? Why do people even bother using classes at all? Well, there are arguments against whether or not object-oriented programming is necessary or even beneficial to use, and that's an entirely different rabbit hole that I might go over in the future. But for the purposes of this video, let's talk about why it is used. The use of classes in programming offers several benefits. Firstly, classes enable code organization by reducing redundancy. By creating a class, you can consolidate similar segments of code, avoiding the need to repeat the same code for different instances. To illustrate this, consider a video game character with attributes like attack, defense, and agility. Now imagine having multiple instances of this character, perhaps even hundreds. Without classes, you would have to duplicate the code for assigning these attributes, with only the specific values differing. However, by using a class, you can define the shared characteristics once and create new objects based on that class, eliminating code duplication. This advantage of code reuse becomes especially valuable when dealing with complex systems. By defining classes, you can establish a clear structure and hierarchy, making code maintenance and updates more manageable. Well, in theory. Before moving on to constructors, let's make a very simple class based on what we've discussed. As you can observe, we are defining a class with variables that can be assigned later. These variables represent the properties of a character. In this case, we assume that every character will have these same properties. A property refers to a variable assigned to a class or object, which we will discuss further as we explore objects. When objects are created, they are done so through the use of something called a constructor function. Constructors often accept arguments to make objects unique. In C++ or Java, the appropriate access modifier must be used before using a constructor. The access modifier determines the accessibility of information outside of the class. By default in C++, everything is private, meaning it cannot be accessed from outside of the class. While familiarity with access modifiers is important for larger OOP projects, this video will only cover the code that fits within a single snippet. In C++, 
there are three access modifiers, private, public, and protected. In Java, there are four access modifiers, private, public, protected, and default. Default only refers to things that are private, but only private to the package, which we don't have to care about. In each of these languages, an object of the class character is created by calling the constructor function and passing specific arguments. This creates a unique instance of the object with its own set properties. In object-oriented programming, there are four main principles. Inheritance, classes can inherit properties and methods from parent classes. Abstraction, objects can abstract away details behind properties and methods to simplify things, which allow the use of methods and properties without knowing the underlying functionality. Polymorphism, children classes can override the methods of their parent class, allowing for inherited classes to take on many forms. And encapsulation, the concept of restricting access details within an object from other parts of the program via access modifiers. Inheritance is the principle in which a child class inherits attributes and behaviors from its parent class. Just as an object inherits properties from its class, a child class inherits qualities from its parent class and can further modify or extend them. Let's consider an example where we have an animal class and we want to describe specific types of animals such as cats and dogs. Instead of creating separate classes for each animal type, we can create an animal class as the top level and general purpose class and then derive more specific classes from it. For instance, we can create a feline class that inherits from the animal class and adds attributes specific to felines. Similarly, we can create separate classes for canines and ursines, each inheriting from the animal class and adding their own specific attributes. The advantage of using inheritance is the ability to create multiple objects from these derived classes without duplicating the code that is common to all animals. Now let's apply this concept to our character example. What if we create a class that inherits from the character class called God and another separate child class called human? Both of these classes will inherit properties from the character class, but can also have distinct properties from each other. In the code snippet below, I've created child classes using inheritance, including three characters, two gods and one human. The humans and gods share some similarities, but also have their own unique attributes. In this example, the God class inherits from the character class and adds additional attributes like religion, symbol, and quality. The human class also inherits from the character class but includes attributes like title and nationality. By utilizing inheritance, we can reuse code from the parent class and create specialized classes that build upon it. Inheritance provides a way to organize and structure code, promoting code reusability and maintaining a clear hierarchy between classes. Abstraction is a concept that exists in programming beyond just object-oriented programming. It involves hiding complex logic and operations behind a simplified interface, removing unnecessary details for the end user and providing them with a straightforward way to accomplish a task. Abstraction plays a significant role in making programming languages easier to use and understand. It enables declarative programming and simplifies the logic required for certain tasks. Essentially, abstraction allows us to focus on what needs to be done rather than how it is done. In the context of our character example, we can achieve abstraction by implementing interfaces in object-oriented languages. In C++, interfaces are implemented as abstract classes. In this example, we define an abstract class called actions that serves as an interface. It declares pure virtual methods, run, strike, and shield, in which the class character inherits from actions and provides implementations for these methods. The god and human classes also inherit from character and can utilize the methods inherited from the parent class. By using abstraction, we can interact with our characters through simple method calls without having to worry about the logic underneath. Polymorphism is a concept in object-oriented programming that allows a method to be inherited and behave differently depending on the class that's inheriting it. To understand polymorphism, consider an example where you have an animal class and you want each animal to make a sound. However, each animal may make a different sound. In this case, you can use polymorphism to define a default method for making a sound in the animal class and then override that method in each specific animal class to provide the appropriate sound for that animal. In the context of our gods and humans example, suppose we want to add a unique method to each character class but still have a default implementation available. Polymorphism allows us to achieve this by implementing the method with the same name in each class, but with different behaviors. In this code, we define a virtual method uses abilities in the base class character. In each derived class, God and Human, overrides this method with its own implementation. When we call uses ability on different objects of the base class, the appropriate overridden method is invoked based on the actual type of the object. This is an example of polymorphism where the same method name is used across different classes, but exhibits different behavior depending on the class that it is called from. 
Encapsulation is a fundamental concept in object-oriented programming that involves enclosing data and functionality within a class and controlling access to that data. It promotes the idea of hiding internal details and providing public interfaces for interacting with the data. This is really where access modifiers come in handy. By designating certain variables or methods as private, they are restricting direct access outside the class. You can then choose which methods are public for the end user or programmer to use and access data. This form of encapsulation ensures that internal state of an object is not modified or access inappropriately from external code. Since we can't directly access any private properties on objects, we can make methods that allow us to access this information. These methods are most commonly referred to as get and set. Getters retrieve the value of a property, allowing external code to access the encapsulated data. Setters, on the other hand, enable external code to modify the internal state by setting a new value for a property. By using these methods, the class maintains control over how the data is accessed and modified. By encapsulating data and providing access through methods, the class can enforce constraints perform validation, and maintain consistency. This protects the integrity of the data and ensures that it is accessed and modified in a controlled and predictable manner, enhancing the overall robustness and maintainability of the codebase. Well, least in theory. To demonstrate this in code, we'll just encapsulate all of the data that we've added to all of our different objects so far. Now, in order to access this data, we have to go through methods to do so. Well, that was the basics of object-oriented programming. I hope that was helpful. And yeah, uh, we pretty much just went over all the basics, constructors, classes, and encapsulation, inheritance, blah, 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 blah. However, there were some things that I wanted to go over in this video that I thought were best fit for a different video, like, uh, for instance, design patterns and uh, dependency injection and stuff like that. So perhaps I'll make another video, um, but uh, let me know what you thought of this. If there's anything confusing, please let me know in the comments. And yeah, have an amazing life.